Good morning, everybody. It's absolutely lovely to see you all. Um, we've got friends who have travelled from uh, far away. We've got uh, visitors, uh, local visitors, and uh, it's just lovely to have everybody here. Um, <clears throat> as we gather, we're worshipping and we're thanking God, but we're also rejoicing in the fact that Ian has come to the place in his Christian journey uh, where he wants to be baptised. So he's chosen some of the hymns. I won't tell you which ones in case you don't like them. I've chosen some, he's chosen some. And um, he's chosen, uh, uh, he's directed my thoughts to Psalm 145. So that's where we'll uh, begin our worship. And part of Psalm 145 says this, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another and they will tell you of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendour of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. So that's going to be the pattern that we'll follow as we sing our first hymn, At the Name of Jesus, Every Knee Shall Bow. I'll just tell you, it was Ian's choice this one. Let's start. before you today to uh, bring our thankful praise because you are a wonderful God and we ask that your presence be with us now at this special time <coughs> speak to each of our hearts and remind us afresh of just who you are and what you mean to each of us so we ask that you would use the words of our hymns and prayers and the scripture that's read and that would be for your glory 
And through all our time together, Lord, we want you to be the centre of our hearts and of our worship. Amen. It's the season of Advent, isn't it? A time of uh, waiting and hoping, anticipation, quietly uh, reflecting and thinking about the coming King. We've waited a a little while since we last had uh, a baptismal service, uh, but Ian, um, you're going to help us reflect on Jesus, the Saviour of the world, and uh, God's presence here kind of marks this special moment in your faith journey, and you've been uh, good enough to let us all share it, so that's good. Uh, I know there's lots of... uh, we're all one in Jesus, we know that, and there's different people from different churches, and we just do things slightly differently. So three is a, a good uh, scriptural uh, number, isn't it? Um, and we've got three elements here today. We've got um, the human trust that kind of joins together with God's life-giving uh, love. And uh, so God meets us here, and he calls us to obedience, and As I say, Ian's already part of our church family and has been connected with us for a long time, but now he's publicly witnessing to his Christian faith. Uh, God commissions us, doesn't he, all of us, to serve and uh, uh, to to, to keep his promises. And he gives us the Holy Spirit to help us because he knows that on our own uh, we're a bit useless, really. Um, So what's happening here is believers' baptism. Uh, As Baptists, we don't have any holy water or magic water or any magic powers or anything like that. Um, What's going to happen is uh, Ian's going to be immersed in ordinary Gateshead tap water. (laughs) Hopefully it's not going to be too cold. And um, because God's already changed his life, he's already worked uh, his, his, his grace in Ian's life. And now we, we're going to publicly affirm that and declare his belief in Jesus as his saviour. It's one of the reasons the Baptists sort of baptise people who are, uh, have made a personal commitment to Jesus and kind of understand uh, what they're doing. So the, 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 the symbolic uh, signs here um, are, uh, as Ian goes into the water, that's the cleansing and the redemption, and as he comes back up again, the renewal and the union with Jesus. Uh, It's not going to make any difference to his Christian life because he's already made that commitment. It's just a step along the way, if you like. It's also the reason uh, that we would dedicate a baby um, uh, and and, and into the church's keeping, into God's keeping, and save baptism until uh, the person uh, knows what they're doing. So uh, do you know what you're doing? Yes. Come here then. I think so. Do I have to? So, Ian's going to tell us a little bit about his life, um, and uh, I'll I'll ask him a couple of questions. So, has an interest in faith always been there? Yes. Um, Before I met, before I came, or before I married Alison, or before I came here, I used to go to Reading Chapel. Reading Chapel um, Church in Gosforth. I uh, started going there um, as a young, probably about 10, 12 year old kid. Um, like a young person, just went there to, as, as fellowship, really, you know what I mean, to enjoy people. Uh, went there for a while, then got into the like, young people's group. And then twice went to Cambridge, once in 87, and then once in 89, when sort of um, went home and then it was a something hit me at home and that sort of um, gave my life to God there but never really followed it ahead or told anybody but then things happened I got married to Alison and stuff and but still kept faith Mm -hmm. we could call it and then when Alison passed away unfortunately last year my faith became stronger because I came back here mm-hmm. and I found that something spoke to me one day when Bob, our ex-pastor, was speaking and then I re- reinforced my faith with God. Mm, excellent. I was going to say, well, are there any particular people that have influenced you? Well, obviously Bob will be one of them. Yes, Bob and there's been like other people who have, um, other preachers and stuff like that who have um, um, seen 
um, heard, heard. You know, more, um, gentleman who really influenced me and people think he's a hypocrite at some point and all that is a guy called Steve Chalk. Mm -hmm. um, um, he went as a Cape Ray one time and he really spoke to me and it was a good thing. Yeah. So this is kind of what's brought you to today, isn't it? Yes, it, it is. All of, yes. All of that. yes. Anything else you want to add or? You just want to sit down. I just want to sit down, thanks. <laughs> just a moment. Uh, so what can we pray for you? What, what, you know, as a church, we're going to look after you. What, what, what can we? Um, just pray for us to make sure that my Christian journey will be a good journey and that I become a beacon. Um, and have out. With the light on your head. Yes, please. Okay, right. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for Ian. We thank you for his story, his testimony of you speaking to him through various people at various times in his life. And we just ask that you would be with him this morning and that you would touch him and that you would bless him. And he in turn will be a blessing to us here at Beacon Love because we ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's the first time I've been quiet. Long may it continue. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Um, now then, lost my place. Oh yes, we're going to sing um, Meekness and Majesty and we'll stand to sing. Lovely hymn. <laughs> friends here today who have had long associations uh, with Beacon Love. Uh, the fact that uh, most of them were in the young people's group that I helped to lead and now some of them are grandparents and on the verge of retirement, some of them semi-retired, that doesn't make me feel old at all. 
I thought those of you who uh, know uh, Janet and Chris and Peter and Karen uh, might like a little update on uh, what's going on. <coughs> and for those of you that uh, don't know them, uh, you maybe appreciate what we had to put up with all those years ago. <laughs> Chris. Thanks, Irene. Uh, you've almost discovered the uh, secret of eternal youth. <laughs> Not as much as me. But, uh, Thank you very much for the uh, the invitation to join you. You're a good-looking bunch out there, and it's great, great to see you again. Uh, uh, and some of you uh, for the first time too. So, I've been married 36 years now. <laughs> and you know, after 36 years of marriage, you get to know that steely uh, look in your partner's eyes. <laughs> that there's absolutely no way whatever she says you're going to make any difference to change her mind and about midnight last night there was a dig in the ribs and says there's no way Chris I'm going to stand up here and speak <laughs> on our behalf you do it <laughs> it's usually something a lot more banal like there's no way you're going to go out to church wearing what you're wearing there <laughs> So I've just got a very last minute, uh, uh, just a quick update. Uh, so, uh, 1986, uh, Janet and I uh, um, uh, tied the uh, uh, the knot as such, and Norman Hailey was the the pastor at the time. Now he was a divisive character, was Norman, uh, and uh, he uh, he was very very influential in our lives, particularly Janet. And Janet came along to this uh, uh, this church here, and really, yeah, it, that's where her faith journey began. And Norman was very, very, very encouraging in in in, in setting her off on in, in that faith journey. Uh, I was a child in chapel, so I was a bit of an outsider, really. But you know, we we got together uh, often uh, as youth groups and uh, so coming into this building it almost for me feels like coming home it really does and I know Janet would say very much the same uh, too you know I just feel I'm, a, I'm amongst family here and uh, we just fondly remember many people who uh, were there at, in the early days of our faith journey uh, and uh, I can't emphasize how strongly enough how important this church and the people were in it in and just getting our faith just rooted and established and all i want to share is a couple of verses uh, really uh, if i fast forwarded um you know use the tape recorder nobody uses a tape recorder anymore do they and i don't know but uh, that shows you my sort of age uh, and uh, uh, you know yes 36 years later we've got three kids they're scattered uh, one's in australia one's in london and the other one's in inverness so with th uh, the grandparents now three times over it's a blessing to us uh, but uh, uh, we've we've um, we, we, we're staying now in Coldstream, we've been up there for 20 years and love it, uh, uh, it's, it's wonderful. We're seeking God's will for the next stage in our journey uh, in terms of where to worship. Uh, uh, there's not much in the way of a, a lively congregation up in Coldstream, but so we've been going to a place in Churnside, but it would just be wonderful if we could find uh, something very close to home. But, so that's the fast forward button. Uh, I just want to kind of look back just to uh, just uh, a couple of verses that uh, I think I'd like just to pass on this morning. And the first one is written by the Apostle Paul in Colossians uh, in chapter three, uh, chapter two, sorry, uh, and uh, uh, verse six. It says, "So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him. Continue." To live your lives in him rooted and it's that word it's that rooted and i, I believe that our faith and i know janet particularly feels her faith was rooted in this place with these people her brothers and sisters in christ here and 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 we can't uh, uh, praise god enough and thank you for the blessing that this uh, fellowship uh, uh, established and rooted uh, uh, her uh, in her faith journey rooted and built up in him 
strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. And we are thankful for you and I just want you uh, to know uh, how much uh, uh, we just uh, are grateful for uh, the fellowship that we've enjoyed over the years uh, looking back. Um, and we give God the glory for it. And the Apostle Paul, uh, in another book in the New Testament, said these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He said, um, I planted it. I planted the seed. He said, I planted the seed. Okay. Apollos watered it. So that was one of his fellow workers. Apollos watered it. But the next bit is, but God made it grow. So... How it spoke to me was, you know, this fellowship here in Beacon Loaf uh, was very much there and the people like Norman and many that are still here today and some who have uh, sadly departed but they're in, a, in, a, in, in glory now and we just praise them for the seed that they uh, sowed in both of our lives and, for, uh, and, and the watering that we received in those early years and then as we moved on through our lives uh, benefited from the nurturing discipleship of many people uh, uh, but we give God the glory because he is the one that's made us grow and made us able to stand here and just give him the praise and the glory thank you thank you Chris um, Chris is Ian's brother-in-law so he's uh, gonna uh, help Peter um, uh, baptize. There's, there's two Ians, there's two Chris's, there's two uh, Peters. It's very uh, tricky. Um, <clears throat> Peter Firth and Chris are going to be in the pool with Ian. Uh, a lady that has uh, a lot of influence in uh, uh, the young people's lives of uh, a few years ago, Joan, I'm going to ask to come and give our intercessory prayers, please. I'm sandwiching in between Peter Kerridge and Chris. Uh, because uh, you were really involved at the time. <laughs> Actually, it's just lovely for us to see people from those days. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace to thank you for a new day. It's a privilege to be in your house, Lord, to worship you and praise your wonderful name, and to thank you for your presence with us this morning. We pray for our two oldest members, Olive and Sadie, mm -hmm. who are both in care homes, and ask you to be with them mm -hmm. as they are cared for on a daily basis. I thank you that they've settled there well. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, who have suffered so much over the past months. We ask you to be with them today. Please hear the prayers of your people who are praying for you to intercede on their behalf so that this war would cease and those dear people like Olena's family who have had to flee their country would be able to return to their homeland and live in peace. I pray, Lord, for the people in our town who are suffering due to the cost of living increasing. I thank you for our food bank, which is able to give food to those in need. I thank you for all those who donated food during the past three days at the Tesco store. Their generosity was astonishing and greatly appreciated by those who were helping to collect the food given by so many people. <coughs> it is with great joy, Jesus, we meet together this morning to see Ian being baptized. We pray for him as he proclaims his love for you by this public act of believers' baptism. Maybe he, may he be filled with the Holy Spirit and be used by you in service here in this church. I pray your hand upon his life as he continues to grieve for the loss of Alice and his wife and for his family too who are grieving the same. <coughs> Bless us all, Lord, as we sing your praises and hear from you as we listen to your word this morning. May you be glorified by this service and your name uplifted on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can I just say, Ian, this past year you and I have gone through a similar story, journey, and it's been a real encouragement to me to watch you grow in your faith as you've come along back to Beacon Milk, and it's a pleasure to have you here. And I just bless you for that. Thanks.
So my name is Peter. I came from <coughs> came from this church many years ago. There's a little stone outside one of the walls, somewhere over there. Um, and I was at the laying of that stone as a seven-year-old boy. Actually, I was six. It was 1967. And um, of course, I didn't know where uh, South End was when I used to come here all these years. South End Road um, was just a road. And um, and I I grew up in this church and. Um, and I got involved in hospital radio at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital up the road. And, um, and when I felt called to the ministry, after I went to college and came out, I got called to a church in South End. Isn't that funny? And if I hadn't gone to South End, I wouldn't have got involved in radio full time. And what happened then was I started a campaign for Christian radio. For those of, I know there's a couple of American people here. And um, it was illegal to have Christian radio or Christian television in the UK until 1990. Um, and a bunch of us campaigned for it. And in 1990, the law got changed and it was allowed. And that's how Premier came to be. And I know there's a few people listening to Premier Prayers just now. So if there was no South End, if there was no Baptist Church on South End, I hadn't been the Queen Elizabeth, none of that would have happened. And um, it's funny how God works. And I want to give you a little verse. It's, 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 I'll give you half of the verse. For I know the plans I have for you. Uh, a little while ago, one of our friends, uh, actually, uh, we've known them many, many years now, not Christians. I get a phone call from him one morning saying that his son had committed suicide. Same age as our youngest, Matthew. And he'd gone to school with Matthew. And we'd been in our house, we'd been on holiday together. Anyway, uh, that was in February and I, I took the service and I buried the boy. And then I had to go to America on a trip. And just before I went on the trip, uh, one of our trustees rang me up and said, Did I know, any, did I know anybody who printed Bibles? Uh, in Ukrainian, we needed some. There were some uh, ex-army chaplains out in Ukraine, and when the refugees were coming to them to get away from the shelling, uh, they needed food and they needed shelter. But their lives had been shattered, and they just felt that there was a huge need for Bibles. Did I know anybody who had Bibles in Ukrainian? So, sorry, I've got no idea. Anyway, I'm in America, and um, I'm in Dallas Airport. It's a big old airport. And I'm just about to get a flight to Nashville for a conference. And um, gets this phone call from Danny, the dad, crying. He'd had a bad day. So uh, I just chatted with him, chatted with him, and chatted with him, chatted with him, chatted with him for so long that I nearly missed my flight. <laughs> And I'm running to the gate, and I got on. I was the last guy on the plane, got in with seconds to go. And, um, and the plane was obviously waiting, and, um, and I don't normally talk to people on aeroplanes. But anyway, I had to climb over this bloke to get to my seat. <laughs> so I, uh, I introduced myself, and I said, I'm Peter, I'm from London, I'm sorry about this. I'm going down to Nashville for a conference. Do you live in Nashville, or do you live in Dallas? Where? And he said, oh, I'm Bob. He says, no, no, I live in Dallas. He said, I said, I'm going to a conference as well. I said, uh, I'm going to this broadcaster's convention. He says, yeah, I'm going there as well. <laughs> so I said, I, I, I work in radio and media in the UK. He says, oh, I, I work for the Eastern European Mission. He says, we're the biggest publishers of Bibles in, Euro, in Eastern Europe. <laughs> so I said, oh. I said, hey, uh, <laughs> so you haven't got any, I haven't got any ones in Ukrainian, have you? He says, I've got $450,000 worth in a warehouse in Kiev. He says, I says, can I have them? He says, yes. <laughs> so the story is that um, these, uh, these, uh, there, was, there were literally fighting around the warehouse at the time. There was, uh, he says, if you can get them out, you can have them. And so we waited a couple of weeks and the, the Russians got pushed back. 
and then these chaplains with their various friends and all went and got them and distributed and took them out and distributed them. But this, that's not the end of the story because um, because of that we became friends, me and this guy Bob, and um, he rang me up and uh, said, Are you coming back to Dallas anytime soon? He said, I want to take you to a meeting. And I had to come back, I had to go back again just you know, a few weeks ago. And um, uh, he took me to this prayer Bible study thing. And uh, so I want to meet this guy. This guy's called Bill, <laughs> Bob and Bill. <laughs> and uh, anyway, Bill, Bill, uh, really interesting guy. He, um, he helps to fund Christian initiatives. And um, his latest one is skate parks in Saudi Arabia. Christian skate parks in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Apparently, skate parking kids are on the fringes of stuff. And uh, all over the world, they're, they're not that good at school. Sometimes their families are struggling and all. So they take refuge in the skate parks and their mates. And so he's uh, established these Christian skate parks where you pay your dollars and get good training off Christians. And he's launched them all over the place. And, and he said, hey, do you fancy doing that in Eastern Europe? I said, well, <laughs> I don't know anything about skate parks or anything. He says, I feel that like we should be doing something with you in Eastern Europe. And blow me down, um, the church in Slovenia, and I never even heard where Slovenia was. Apparently it's between Austria and Germany. It's like a, it's like a poor man's Austria, really, but it's lovely. It's very pretty. Um, they want premier prayers in Slovenia. And God just keeps opening doors, and I know the plans I have for you, so that's for you, Ian. I've got no idea what that means, but God knows the plans he has for us. And he takes us on these wonderful adventures if we just let him. That's it. I've never had children of my own, but if I was going to have two boys, they wouldn't be too bad to start with, would they? We're going to give, uh, <clears throat> stand and sing while we uh, take our offering. Uh, uh, how great thou art, O Lord my God, when I know some wonder. Let's stand to sing. Thank you. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to me. Thank you. 
give thanks Lord we've already heard this morning and we know from our own experience what a generous God you are so we thank you for everything that you give to us and our humble gifts back to you are perhaps feeble but we just pray that you would use them for your glory here in this community around Beacon Love in Jesus name Amen, Amen. the uh, bit of uh, Psalm 145 that uh, uh, Ian particularly drew my attention to was towards the end and I'm uh, going to read from uh, verse 17 although I think it was 19 that he particularly said and it says here the Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving towards all he has made the Lord is near to all who call on him to all who call on him in truth he fulfills the desires of his heart and those who fear him, he hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all that love him, but the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name. Now, I, um, I've lost my sermon notes, but hey. Oh, there they are. I just wanted to leave with you a couple of thoughts to encourage us as we um, take on uh, the next few days because most people are busy, there's a lot going on and uh, some of us are involved in that. But I just wanted to think about something to remind you of who God is because it's easy isn't it when we get full of busy to forget. I don't know about you but um, I've had a, a, a rather busy week, uh, but a rather lovely week as well. Um, we went to see uh, Rick Wakeman in concert. You laugh, but he's a fantastic pianist, and it was a really good concert. We went to a wedding of two 76-year-olds in Ashington. Didn't know and didn't know them. There were a contact through Ian's uh, working with Premier. He'd interviewed uh, Rog, the bridegroom. We got this invite. I didn't know anybody, um, but we ended up on a table of people from Bedlington Christian Fellowship. So we had a lovely time. Uh, we attended the switch on of the Christmas Tree Festival in Corbridge on Thursday night. Um, that was really really good. Some of us are going back to see it tomorrow, and. Um, we nearly saw some illum illuminated sheep in Hexham Abbey. They were advertised on Look North. We travelled to Hexham Abbey yesterday to see all but three of them loaded into, um, or herded into uh, a van. So we didn't quite see the illuminated sheep, but we did hear the Northumbrian pipes in St Nicholas's Cathedral yesterday afternoon. So, um, you know, and now this. So, hey. Mind you, not all our weeks are like that um, and you know the same don't you some are a bit dull and boring because you just have the routine things to do some weeks are positively difficult and uh, but the one constant in all of our weeks is God he's always with us so why do we go to all this you know why go to all of this it's a public declaration, as we've said. It's following Christ's example. It's a means of grace. 
And it's very much a two-way thing, because although Ian's the one going into the pool, the church is, is going to be blessed and encouraged, and has already been, has been said. Psalm 145 is full of praise to the Lord, talking about the character of God, what he's like. We read a little bit uh, in the, in, uh, earlier on in the psalm, and it says, The Lord is great. He's, you know, powerful. He's excellent in every way. He's gracious. In other words, he freely gives to us undeserved kindness. Nothing we can do deserves God's grace. He's compassionate. You know, he has that strong feeling or sympathy for others and, and, a, and a want to help them that we sometimes have, but not always, maybe. The Lord is good. He's morally right. Very satisfactory and acceptable. He's faithful. We have that continuous loyal support from him and it doesn't wax and wane. He's loving. He cares for us deeply. It says he upholds. In other words, when we're finding life a bit tricky, he, he keeps us going, he strengthens us, he defends us. The part of the psalm that Ian chose was, uh, the, and the, the later part was, the Lord is righteous in all his ways. He's just always correct. If we slightly altered that punctuation, we would say, He's just always correct, which is true. Doing the right thing. God is the absolute standard, isn't he, um, of, of being right. It's where we take our measure. Um, he's right in all his ways, the decisions he makes, the direction he goes in, the moral character, the fibre of, of his character. Sadly, we aren't quite the same. But thankfully, Jesus puts his righteousness into every believer's heart. And that's really wonderful. Psalm says, the Lord is near. In other words, everybody who calls on him in truth, God is accessible and he responds to his people. So when we pray, we know that he hears, doesn't always answer the way we want. He sometimes surprises us. But whatever happens, his grace is with us. It says, the Lord watches over all who love him, a protector, somebody who keeps an eye on us and makes sure we're safe and secure wherever we are or when we just have a little bit of a wobble. The Lord is all of these things and so many more and you can think of them, I'm sure. And, and, and not just in a good week, but constantly, forever. So here's a challenge for each of us. Think about a different attribute of God every day until Christmas. A bit like opening God's advent calendar, if you like, but where the treats are even better than chocolate. And if you don't get all of this, maybe advent now, as we approach Christmas, is the time to start thinking about it. This baptismal time. The time to start thinking about who God is. So Ian, the time of anticipation is over. My hope is the water is warm. So, <laughs> so that as we prepare, the three gentlemen, Peter, Chris and Ian, get themselves sorted, we'll uh, remain seated as we sing, Great is the Lord. He is holy and just, which kind of reflects on some of the words of Psalm 145.
this all, let's pray. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus this morning and pray that Ian, as he comes to be baptized as a believer, may be very aware of the presence of your Holy Spirit within him. May this baptism be for him a special experience of a union with Jesus Christ in his death and his resurrection. So that just as Jesus was raised from dead, death by the glory of the Father, he may also be raised in newness of life. Pour out your spirit upon him, we pray, and anoint him for your service, that he may grow into the likeness of Jesus Christ and reflect your glory. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ian. Do you believe in the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord? I do. <clears throat> in obedience to the call of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, do you repent of your sins and come to be baptised? Yes. And do you promise, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to serve Christ faithfully in the fellowship of the Church for the rest of your life? Yes. It's traditional for us to give you a verse, and I'd like to just uh, point you to the last verse in uh, chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians. It says this, We all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. And I think the emphasis is that we're being transformed into Jesus' image, but it's not you that's going to do it. Yes. It's the Lord that will do it. Yes. It's in his power. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go into the water. <laughs> And I didn't like water neither. Don't drop that in. No, no, it was just there. So, you want to come in the middle? And right. Ian Moon, my brother in Christ, having heard of your repentance and your faith, we now baptise you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yeah, two seconds, two seconds. Right, cool for it. Thank you, brother. Cheers.
we all have a responsibility. So it's no good sitting there thinking, oh, well, they've done it. We all have a responsibility. And, you know, Satan will be ready to uh, attack all of us um, because of this wonderful thing that's happened this morning. Our closing hymn uh, encourages us to uh, arise, oh, church, arise and put your armor on. Let's stand to sing.
Lord, thank you for this service. Thank you for Ian. Thank you for each other. Guide and protect us as we go forward into next week. Make us aware of your presence and help us to live our lives both honouring to you and considerate to those around us. And for those who are travelling over the next few days and weeks, especially Adam and Peggy, as they journey to the USA to spend their special time with their family, we ask your blessing and safekeeping on them and on all of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.